I really can't stay. Maybe it's... Hi, BookTube. It's Missy, and today I'm here to do a giant haul for you guys. Giant in my eyes. I mean, I've had bigger. That's what she said. My December book haul slash... Um... Black Friday haul slash my trade away giveaway uh, winner trades. You guys will understand all that in a little bit. So basically, <laughs> what I'm going to share with you first is my Black Friday purchases. Then I will share with you guys the trade away giveaway exchanges. So I did a trade away last month. Almost all of the books that um, the participants who traded with me have come in, so I'm going to be opening up those for you guys to see. And then I do have a Christmas present from Penelope, uh, my BFF here on BookTube. Now, she wrapped those, and she said that I should wait until Christmas, but I won't be here, and I don't want to take them on the plane with me. Well, maybe not. I definitely don't want to open them on the plane. So I will get through that. Um, so, okay, let me just do a little update. If you guys have been wondering where I am and you haven't been on my channel in a while, I work full time now. So I sub in the mornings at the elementary school that I work at. And in the afternoons, I do my mild to moderate um, instructional aid, you know, where I work with kids that have disabilities and autism and so forth and so on. So I'm swamped. And if you work in a school, bless you, I understand having children around you 24 seven practically <laughs> can be sometimes exhausting. Uh, physically and emotionally because you have to be empathetic for their feelings all the time. You have to constantly be disciplining them in the classroom. Sit down, stop talking, get your hands out of your desk. Uh, it's like a, you're a broken record. And then I have children, so I come home and then I do it again. So it's just, it's nonstop of me giving my all all of my attention, all of my patience, all of my love, and um, I do it every day, all day long. So, if you're wondering why I haven't made a video in a while, it's because I am literally exhausted. Um, I just don't have time. I barely read as it is. Uh, I brought this up last year, and I think the year before that, because I'm so proud of myself. In 2014, I read 180 books, friends. 180 books. I feel like that is the epitome of of my my reading. Like that is the pinnacle, not epitome, uh, the pinnacle of my reading career. I don't think I'll ever make 180 books again. It was in 2014. I wasn't working um, all that much back then. Um, my kids were still a little bit smaller, so it was a little bit easier. I I just had more time, and I didn't really watch YouTube in 2014. And I didn't play uh, my World of Warcraft anymore. I took a year break. And I did this, and I did that, where it's like everything was just surrounded by books. And this year has been lacking. I've only read 65 books this year. I'm hoping to, you know, struggle and get that last 10 books so I can reach my 75 book challenge goal on Goodreads this year. Uh, we'll see. If I can't, if I can't, I'll just cheat and change it back down to about like 70. <laughs> whatever, whatever I'm about to be close to. Um, because I did start at 50 for this year and I exceeded it by 15 books. So at least I beat my original, uh, you know, number that I wanted to do. <sighs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I make this reading thing a chore or a job and it should be fun. So anywho, uh, that's where I've been. That's why I don't have any videos for you guys. And <laughs> this Saturday, I leave to go to New Zealand to visit my sister. I've been talking about this for two years now because we've been planning this for two years. Uh, I'll be gone for 20 days, so I won't even see you until next year. And by that time, I hopefully will have um, more of a plan on what we're going to be doing together 
in 2020. So, yes. Uh, let's get into the video. Now, like I said, this is going to be a Black Friday haul, uh, my trade away giveaway winter exchanges, and some Christmas presents from Penelope. Uh, first things first is my makeup. If you don't like makeup, I will leave a link in the video. Well, it won't be a link in the video, but it'll have a timestamp in the video. And then there will be a link down below where you can skip this and just go straight to the books. Um, but I really like makeup, and uh, I don't wear face makeup, so all of the makeup that I buy is generally for my eyes. And, I mean, ColourPop is in LA, so it doesn't take that long to get to me, although it did feel like it took forever to get these, because they didn't ship them out for like three weeks. Like they were pending for like three weeks because so many people bought stuff on Black Friday that I think they were just swamped. So I got three items. Ooh, I didn't buy that. Why'd I get that? Sweet. Well, that's cool. Okay, so the first thing I purchased is a new brush. Um, this is the, I think this is called the small tapered brush. I do have the bigger sister, which uh, if you haven't purchased a ColourPop brush before, they're amazing. They're pretty cheap. They're between um, like, a, like a Real Techniques price. It's between a Real Techniques and like an e.l.f. brush, like one of their uh, better premium ones. So I think this one, that doesn't have prices, but I think this was like $4.50, something like that. I love it because the handle is so fat. It makes me feel like I have more control when I am blending, and this will fit like in the corners or what have you. I mean, it's not a big fluffy brush to do the whole thing. It's more of a precise uh, crease brush in my opinion, but I needed one and I love ColourPop so I bought it and uh, during Black Friday everything was 30% off. Alright, next I had to buy uh, two palettes. Again, I don't wear face makeup so I don't usually buy, um, what am I trying to say? Oh my god, <laughs> concealer or foundation, I don't usually buy that stuff. I just do my eyes. No. I just do my eyes or maybe I'll do my lips and just some mascara depending on what I decide to do that day. It's funny because a lot of people will do both, but in my opinion, it doesn't look good. It looks like, I don't want to say whorish because that's very offensive. Um, clownish or like too extreme for for me personally. I, you know what I hate? <laughs> this is just a t small tangent. That I have to trip over my words, sugarcoat things, cover things up just to say what I want to say because I have to make it so that like, no one gets offended. When everybody has their own opinion, my face could be offensive to you. People have said that my voice is ugly and they hate listening to me. Now, that's their opinion. Did they offend me when they said that? Yeah, but am I going to sit there and mope about it and cry and complain on the internet? No, I mean, I, I kind of just did right now, but I'm not complaining because that's their opinion. So if you don't like my opinions, that's totally fine. But you don't have to tell me that you don't like my opinions. <sighs> I don't know why I had to get that off my chest, but I feel like I did because about the whole like makeup thing. So I don't like having eyeshadow and lipstick on unless it's like a Christmas party and I'm supposed to be fully decked out. If it's just every day and I'm going to work, it's gonna be either eyes or lips, never both. All right, back to what I'm talking about. So I got the green palette. This is called Just My Luck. I really, really, really like green eyeshadows a ton. Um, and so yeah, I needed it in my life. 
And those, those bright, like these two uh, metallic greens are amazing. Look at that. Let's see this one. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look at that. Look at it. Look at it. So cool. So excited. Uh, this is in a plastic package. It is really, really heavy, but I know um, some people don't like the fact that it comes in plastic and it's not in that in their standard cardboard material, but that's the unicarton it came with. I keep all my unicartons. I don't, every time I'm done with my makeup, I put it back in the unicarton. I just feel like it is more likely to be intact and not fall apart if it's like that. Oh, this one doesn't come in a unicarton, which is very bizarre to me. Wait a minute. This is supposed to be the all that glitters. It better be all that glitters. For a second, I thought it was going to be the butterfly palette. All right, let me open it up and double check. Near, near, near. Sorry, this is taking forever. I'm so excited. Okay, now um, these are pressed glitters. They are extremely chunky and gorgeous. Because these are big, What does that smell like? It smells so familiar. Oh my God, I can't. What is that? I can't remember. Anyways, because these are like, like really chunky pressed glitters, um, they have to say that it's not eye safe and they're absolutely right. I mean, if I were to put this, oh my God, <laughs> if I was to put, oh, it's so pretty. If I was to put this on my eye and then rub it in, those huge chunks of glitter could literally, um, hurt my corneas, but, um, I'm going to wear them on my eyeballs anyway, because they're gorgeous and I don't rub my eye ever because I don't want to mess up my makeup. So let's just see two more because um, why not? There's that one. Ew. Which else? Which else? Let's do, let's do this. Oh my God. Let's do this pinky one. Look at that pinky one. Oh, so beautiful. These are really like, really soft glitters like super soft, like they're not like really hardly, wow, that's not how you speak. It's not a hard packed glitter, so when you dip your fingers in it, it it's pretty crumbly, so if you were to get this, you'd have to be really careful not to um, push down too hard, because it'll mess it up. But I wonder why it doesn't come in a unicarton, and it just had a sticker close, holding it together, because then it'll just open up, which is a bummer drag, I don't want to break it. And then I got this pressed powder in here. I don't know why. What does the package say? It's a pressed powder shadow. And it says, sorry we're late. Oh, yeah. Um, this did take a really long time to come to my house. So they sent me a little boat, which is a kind of a, is that a warm toned? brownie color. Let's open it up and check her out. I don't have a palette to stick this in, so that's kind of a bummer, but oh yeah. Well, that's more of like a neutral, huh? It's kind of warm, but kind of cool at the same time. Don't ask me. I'm not a makeup guru. I know nothing about anything, but yay! Thanks ColourPop for uh, the free eyeshadow. Uh, that'll come in handy. All right, so that was the only extra thing that I have in my um, in my haul. Everything else is books. So let's begin on that. Okay, that seemed like it took forever, but I also am at 19 minutes on this, and I did do like a million retakes. So we'll find out where I am actually in the video when I edit this. However. 
continuing. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Let's move on. This, this gigantic box right here is my Black Friday book outlet box. Now, even when I am not reading uh, or buying books like I normally do, book outlet is something that I always purchase every single year. Uh, it was crazy though because when I looked it up to see like my past orders, I haven't purchased anything from Book Outlet since March, since like when I went and bought myself books for my birthday, um, which is insane because in the past I've bought books from Book Outlet every single month. So in a way, it's good that I've like saved my money and haven't spent it, you know, on a lot of books that I just, I won't read anytime soon. This though, this giant box of books is mostly um, nonfiction. I figured nonfiction to me is extremely fascinating. It's easier to read sometimes than fiction is, in my opinion, because, uh, I don't know, I don't have to like imagine the world, you know what I mean? I don't have to uh, recognize character names, find out where the plot is, like what am I doing, um, what the mystery is. Uh, it's just, it's just facts. And if you guys have ever like just been watched, um, documentaries all night long, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. That's what it feels like when I'm reading a nonfiction. It's just like, I'm just watching a documentary. I'm learning as I go. It's very interesting and I love it. So let me remove the paper. And I'll give you a little sneaky peeks. Oh, there's my sneaky peeks. And I'm hoping to do a video before I leave to go to New Zealand on um, like my TBR for my trip. Um, so I'll probably pick the skinnier books from this box and some other things. The first one I have here is Catching a Serial Killer, My Hunt for Murderer Christopher Hello Well um, by Stephen Fulcher, and this is a former detective superintendent. Um, you guys will know or see uh, <laughs> like a pattern um, of the books that I like. I really like true crime. Uh, I think it's fascinating. No, I don't ever want to be a victim of a serial killer. But it's fascinating why the way these people work and uh, it's gruesome and I, I just, I don't get it. I don't, like the psychology of it, I don't understand why people are like this. It's very strange to me. Uh, okay, next I have here the true story of how I fell in love with and married a sociopathic fraud, The Charming Predator by Lee McKenzie. I don't know any of these people, and I don't know any of these stories, but the titles interested me, and so I bought them, because they were cheap. <laughs> All right, next we have uh, Unnatural Causes. This is by Dr. Richard Shepard. The dead don't hide the truth, and they never lie. Through me, they can speak. The life and many deaths of Britain's top forensic pathologist. So, yeah, that's cool. Um, can't wait for this. So exciting. If you guys have read any of these books that I take out of the box, please let me know down below if I should pick them up sooner rather than later. The next thing I have here is called Killings. This is uh, an expanded edition of the classic book On Life and Death in America by Calvin Trillin. Well, there's that one. Interesting, interesting. Uh, then we have The Close Encounters Man. How One Man Made the World Believe in UFOs by Mark O'Connell. Uh, if you haven't known... Yay! So if you didn't know, not only do I like serial killer books, but I also like UFOs. <laughs> they're, they're not even on the same page. But I like them. I want to read all of them. 
All right, next we have the inheritance. And this is a family on the front lines of the battle against Alzheimer's disease by Nikki Capsambelis. Capsambelis, maybe, maybe. Um, my grandpa passed away almost four years ago. Well, yeah, four years ago um, from Alzheimer's and dementia. And so um, I always want to learn more about the disease and how to prevent it if we can. Uh, what can we do to, you know, make it so that way all of us don't get it. I don't know. I think it's hereditary. Um, but like I said, I want to learn more. All right. Next we have Tell Me Everything You Don't Remember, The Stroke That Changed My Life by Christine Huang Oakley. Huang? Maybe? Oakley? Look at that illustration. Again, this is medical, medical um, things interest me. I like them. Then we have my 30 years as an FBI undercover agent. This is called Ghost by Michael R. McGowan and Ralph Pezulu. Pezulu. What is it? Ah. Oh. Next. Oh, God. Well, I wasn't expecting this. Doesn't that seem a little... <laughs> A little ridiculous. This is called They All Love Jack. Busting the Ripper by Bruce Robinson. Oh my gosh. Okay, uh, in the background, I don't know if you heard, but the doorbell rang because I got another package in the mail that I kind of bought yesterday. Um, sometimes Amazon is ridiculously fast. So I was going to show you the underneath the dust jacket because I just wanted to see if it was like a pretty color. And it's Blue. Ooh. I love it when they're colored all the way through. I don't like that, like, mix-match spine thing. That kind of makes me crazy. I don't understand why it's so big. An almost endearing characteristic of Ripology is its enthusiasm for taking some of the greatest liars of the 19th century at their word. I, oh. This is huge! Why is it so big? Oh, see this thing? I hate this, where it's red and then black. Uh, I hate that. Oh man, why is this so big? <laughs> oh, there's parts. Ooh, there's pictures. I like pictures. This is a practically a freaking um, ripper textbook. That's, that's what it seems like to me. And I'm here for it. Uh, it will take me a while to get through, but yay. Love that. All right. Next is another book. This is called Love. Whoa. Why was I? There we go. Love and Death in the sun, sun, Sunshine State. The Story of a Crime by Cutter Wood. Uh, I believe, well... In this gripping exploration of an island murder and a heartland love, Cutter Woods subverts all our expectations for the true crime genre. He challenges what we mean by true by presenting us with the feats of imagination alongside traditional rep reportage and challenges how we understand crime by asking us to consider the relationship between acts of extraordinary violence and the rhythms of our ordinary lives. Wood's voice is smart, curious, playful, and wholly engaging. Um, yeah, so this sounded interesting. Sunshine State is Florida, correct? Florida? Let me double check on the front. What does it say? Yep, Florida. When I first looked it up, I thought it was California, but it's not. All right. I did purchase a, a couple of fiction novels as well. So we have here Never Wake, which is the sequel to Dream Fall by Amy Plum. Um, story of my life. I haven't picked up the first one yet. Yeah, I, I will. I will. 
this one seems really interesting. Uh, it's about some kids who have to go to a sleep, uh, like, study, a sleep study, and the doctors somehow make put them in like some kind of coma where the kids are stuck in their sleep state but they end up not being able to wake up and it's not like a good dream it's a nightmare so that sounded really interesting and I I, I thought the premise of the first one was so good that I wanted the second one and they're so cheap on book outlet during Black Friday that you know if I just <sighs> If I don't read them, then they're your guys's. I mean, that's how I look at it. If I don't read the books, I'm not necessarily wasting my money because then I send them to you and you guys get books out of it, right? That's a win-win. Next, I got We Are Where the Nightmares Go and Other Stories by C. Robert Cargill. C. Robert Cargill. I think I own another one of his books. Oh yeah, Queen of the Dark Things and Dreams and Shadows. Um, I own those too. I own those books. The duology. And I, I still haven't read them. Story of my life. But this is a collection of short stories. And I do better with collections. So we'll see. We will see. Next I got Contagion. Um, by Aaron Bowman. I've been wanting to read this forever. This was on my most anticipated reads list. I borrowed this from the library, never got to it. So when I saw it for super cheap on Book Outlet, I had to buy. Uh, this is a sci-fi horror, and I am obsessed with sci-fi horror. So basically what the premise says is um, there's an abandoned ship or an SOS ship. It's just lying in space. Um, and then another ship goes to see if they can rescue anybody. And then something bad happens. There's like an outbreak of a virus. And i so excited. And I think, actually, I think there is a sequel to this. But I'm going to be good and I'm going to read this one first. Right? Right. I am. I am. I am. I am. Next, I bought The Echo Room by Parker Peavy House. He also wrote another book that I wanted to read, but I never bought it. Where Futures End. Yeah. It's called a novella collection. I. It was on my uh, most anticipated reading list, reads list, and it's also on my Amazon wish list, I think. I still have it on there. Um, but this is about... Two kids that wake up in a room, and uh, they, I think they know each other, but they don't like each other, but then they have to um, rely on each other to help each other out, to figure out how to get out of the room, and I can't remember if the days repeat themselves, like they wake up and they have to do this all over again. Uh, it says, the only thing worse than being locked in is facing what you locked out says it's a slow burn mystery. We'll see. It's not that long, so hopefully it goes fast. All right. Next, I bought The Conspiracy of Us by Maggie Hall. Now, I have read this one, so this is going to go directly to my red shelf, but I wanted to buy it because it was like $1.80, I think, and I also own books two and three, which, does it tell you in here what they're called? Does it? Does it? No. I think it's like the map of fate and something else. But there's like a pink and a purple, which I found at the library bookstore for a dollar each um, months ago. So I decided if I'm going to have two and three, I might as well have book one, you know, to complete the collection because I'm a hoarder. That's, that's the real reason right there. I'm a hoarder. All right. Next, I got... The Truth Lies Here. I've been really wanting to read this. I borrowed it again from the library and then immediately returned it because, you know, I never get to my library books and it's not fair to save them while other people want to read them, you know? So I took it back. This is a gorgeous purple. Um, what, is, what color would this be? It's not mauve. It's too dark. Mm, not magenta. That'd be, it's too purple. Mm -mm -mm. Tell me what the color is of this down below. 
can't think of it right now. And I'm usually really good about that because I was obsessed with Crayola colors. So everything is a Crayola color to me. It's got deckled edges, which I absolutely adore deckled edges. And yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I, I don't even remember what this is about, which is disgusting. But a lot of the books that I like are around the same kinds of ideas. So it's like someone lost in the woods and they come back or scary stuff in the woods. Uh, it's going to be something like that. All right. And the last nonfiction that I bought is called Unthinkable, An Extraordinary Journey Through the World's Strangest Brains. And this is by Helen Thompson. I really love this cover. It's... Um, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but it's like lined paper, like legal legal pad paper, but it's uh, like a green color. And then we have white and a sage or sea foam green. That's a, that's a that's a color. Um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. A lot of my uh, nonfiction are actually kind of thick. Makes me slightly nervous since I didn't want to bring any hard covers with me on the plane because I need to like shove it in a backpack. But uh, those were all of my book outlet Black Friday books. Next, Ooh. next I'm going to show you what I purchased from Amazon yesterday. So I'll open that up. It was. Um, relatively cheap so I bought it and that is I hate fairyland volume two but I I loved 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 volume one and I didn't have volume two and then I went to book off in Hawaii and I found volumes three and four so now I can continue on with the series super exciting all right so we did the makeup we did the book outlet uh, Black Friday haul. We did what I just bought yesterday. On to my trade away giveaway trades from the winners. That's a mouthful. Basically, if you don't understand what I'm saying, because sometimes I feel like I don't make any sense. My children tell me that at least. Yeah. So I traded with people, and since it's a trade, we have to exchange books these are all the exchanged books from the people that won the giveaway. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, no, the first box I'm going to open is from Amy. Um, oh, look how weird that is. You see that? I didn't even have to rip it. The, the box just opened up, which is kind of crappy if you think about it, because... Who knows? It could have gotten stolen out of the box. All right. Woohoo! So, um, <laughs> Amy sent me The Whisper Man by Alex North. This is a brand new thriller. It's supposed to be amazing. Um, and I'm excited to read it. It's funny because all of the blurbs on the back are from other thrillers that are supposed to be really good like the silent patient the chalk man um i did read the woman in the window but aj finn has a blurb on here um yeah it says a terrifying page turner with the complexities of fatherhood at its core um so i'm looking forward to reading this one Maybe I'll bring, well, I don't want to bring any any hard covers with me on the plane. I really, really don't. Underneath the dust jacket, it's just black. Yay, I like black books. All right, so there's that one. And let's continue. Then I have here a package from Alex Perez, which is the reading and writing puppet I think that's um, her channel name anyways <laughs> like you guys care I, I I want to acknowledge the person that sent me the books but at the same time I don't want to bore you guys if you know what I mean so let's open this up here let's see what Alex sent me some 
people tell me what they're going to send me. Some people don't, and it's a surprise. So I'm always looking forward to opening the packages and finding out what's inside. Awesome. Okay, so <laughs> she sent me three books. The first one here is Things We Lost in the Fire. Oh, Things We Lost in the Fire Stories by Marina Enriquez. Oh, okay. Mesmerizing writer who demands to be read. So it's short, short story collection of things that are lost in fires, right? Aww. Okay. I love short story collections, so I'm definitely looking forward to reading that. Under a Cloud of Rain here is a Nick Knoll mystery by A.R. Bauman. I don't know if this is part of a you know, um, a series. So if it is and you know, let me know down below. Otherwise, of course, I'm going to look it up and find out if I can read this without reading the other ones and yada yada. But then I also have here Choke by Chuck Polinick. Now, I do own this book already, which it's not her fault. And when you guys participate with me, I, my, my book shelves are filled with lots and lots of books. So if you don't have my shelves memorized, you wouldn't know whether or not I own something. Um, thank you though to Alex. And what I usually do when there is a duplicate of something I already own is I keep the one you sent me and I give away the one that is on my shelf. That way, even though it's the same, I don't want you guys to think that you can't send me something that I already own or like, freak out that I might already own it because I just give it away to you guys, the copy that I already own, not the one that you have given me. Um, and then she did send me a card, which I will read later off camera. But um, yeah, thank you so much, Alex, for the books. I am looking forward to them. I still haven't read this yet. And Chuck is definitely a hit or miss kind of um, writer. Like I really, really liked Fight Club. But then uh, Haunted was super strange and just like graphic in a way that I didn't want to read. But every time I talk about it, I want the book again, which is so random. Um, anyways, let's move on. Next, we have a package here by uh, my namesake, Missy. And I love, I love that she wrapped this in, um, in a paper bag. Like, it's so cute. It's like a paper, like a, like a, what am I trying to say? I'm sure they have wrapping paper that's made out of, oh my God, like paper bags. I don't know what it's called. But then it's like fully wrapped with tape. Um, it's so stinking cute. I absolutely love it. Uh... But I, I, and I feel bad that I have to cut it open. So let's cut this open, shall we, shall we? Oh, it's like, no, it is, it is like paper bag material. Where do you get this stuff from? Do they sell it at the grocery, why did they grocery store? Do they sell it at like Target or something? I love it. Open it. Ugh. No. Let me in, let me in. <laughs> I love the way it's wrapped. Um, it's like, you see on the inside? It's like saran wrap in the inside, kind of like if you were to get like um, like a basket, like a, yeah, like a hot, like a basket from a friend, or I don't know what I'm trying to say. Uh, but yeah, it's it's all wrapped up in, in, in like saran wrap. I love it, the, the green one, like the holiday colors. Yay! So the first book on the top is making me super excited because it says Haunted House on it. But let me get it out so I can see exactly what the title's called. <laughs> awesome! Okay, I'm making my bed a disaster. All right, it says The Mammoth. The Mammoth Book of Haunted House Stories, including contributions by M.R. James, Hugh Walpole, 
Walpole, Walpole, Walpole, Faye Weldon, Robert Block, Ramsey Campbell, L. P. Hartley, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Joan Aiken, James Herbert, and Ruth Rindle. Oh, so exciting! Yay! I absolutely love haunted house stories. So to have a ooh, have a collection of haunted house stories. So excited. And I have a card here. So thank you very much, Missy. I am going to read the card later after I get off of camera. And then I also got The Extraordinary, which is book one. Thank goodness for sending me the first book of something um, by Mir Mira Paul. This looks super creepy. It says, Prep school rebel Nora may have started the fire that burned down the gym. As punishment, she's now the newest patient in the Road to Recovery program, the latest rehab craze sweeping the Carolina coast. The program reconditions teens through drug-enhanced therapy. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Oh, I'm excited. That sounds awesome. Like... It always freaks me out, like the whole conspiracy things. I'm a sucker and I'm such, I'm so naive and like gullible with all that stuff too. Like what if like the government stole you and then they started experimenting on you and you never knew? Or you know, like I, I get into my head and I'm just like, what if this is all fake? <laughs> what if I'm like stuck, I'm like a really old person and I'm like thinking about my past but because I'm like in a deep sleep or whatever it's very realistic and very um lucid you know what I mean I'm crazy uh again sorry if I offend people um I'm not crazy what is it called silly dramatic uh imaginative there next I have a box from Jamie and Yas. Let's uh, open this bad boy up. Um, when you when you exchange books with me, like trade books with me, more than likely I do bigger trades. So you'll get you know two to three books at a time. That doesn't necessarily mean you need to send me that many books as well. Um, you don't ever have to feel obligated to send me things like that. You don't even have to send me books if you didn't want to. If you were more interested in like sending a coloring book or like crossword puzzles or anything, like I appreciate anything you guys send me because you guys are taking your time to trade with me and I just I just like interacting with you guys. So I did get a card. Thank you so much, Jamie. And oh my gosh. I love presents. Um, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to, you know, open it up. Um, look at this extremely cute package. Like, this sparkly bow is giving me, you know, just... Uh, I wanted to say Liza Minnelli. Why did I want to say that? Maybe because she likes sequins and sparkle, and she usually wears black for a slimming effect. You know, she does the whole chest thing. Anyways, gorgeous, love. Um, and then this, of course, wrapping paper with the little doggy footprints, so cute. I'm keeping the bow because I'm obsessed. And um, I'm super cheap. I keep gift bags. Um, if I can save uh, wrapping paper, I will. Normally I don't because that's something that you can easily get more of. But gift bags, bows, ribbon, uh, the boxes that clothes come in. I save all that stuff so I can re-gift without having to buy new bags. All right, the first box, bu box, book in the box is Bats of the Republic by Zachary Thomas Dodson. Now I have seen this cover. Jamie, I can't remember if we even discussed this. Look at the inside. I don't know if you guys can see that. But this just a bat after bat after bat after bat. Super cool. Oh, geez. Look at the. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. Look at that cover. Okay. The spine feels fuzzy. It, it's, it's fuzzy. And then underneath the dust jacket is more stuff. 
Oh gosh, it's so cool. It's so cool. I don't even know what this is about. In 1843, fragile naturalist Zadok Thomas must leave his beloved Ellsworth in Chicago to deliver a secret letter to General Irion, an infamous commander camped 1,000 miles away on the front lines of the war over Texas. So we have a, like a, <laughs> at the bottom it says open it now. So this is a, like a different history, like a, you know, one of these days I'll know how to speak. Ooh! Oh, oh my God. I'm seriously so stoked to read this book. It's, it's a different formatted book. Can you see that? So it, it looks like a notebook on the inside. So we have like, like drawings, like diagrams and stuff. There's letters to people in here. Oh, wow. Just, uh, it's like a giant scrapbook. <laughs> I'm going to hyperventilate. I love scrapbooks so much. Um, thank you. If this was the only thing in the box, I would have been uh, beyond stoked. But it's not. There's more stuff. <gasps> Look, it's so cute. I love. Look at the bell. Is it? Can I keep this and put this on my tree? I'm going to. I'm going to keep it. Or maybe I can stick it here. I mean, my bookshelves aren't very festive. There we go. Thanks, Jamie, for uh, decorating my bookshelf. All right, next we have a paperback. Let's rip this open. Super excite. Yes! Yes! I don't have this book. I'm so excited. All right. We have Damned here by Chuck Palahniuk. I do own Doomed, but I didn't have Damned, so now I can read them in order. Uh, I love this particular edition. I don't know what other editions they have, but I love the, the devil on the front. Um, I don't even know what this is about, but I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, maybe I'll take this with me. That would be good, huh? Read this on the plane. Okay, okay, I'm so excited. All right, thank you so much for that. And then I do have another one in here. Can I save the bow? Saving the bow. All right, last book in the box. <gasps> Yay, okay, so we did talk about this book. We absolutely talked about this one. Um, this, I think she said she had two copies. So this is from Page Habit. I don't have any more book subscription boxes because I'm still jaded from the last subscription box that I subscribed to. They stole $180 from me. The whole company imploded. I had the worst time on my channel because I was getting hate mail, not death threats, that's a little extreme, but just hate comments after hate comments. And I'm like, it's, I am an innocent bystander here just like you guys. Sorry I am saying the wrong things and you guys are unhappy. However, this is already annotated by the author. So if you open up the book here, there's like these little stickies and it talks about it, which is so, so cool. I love it. What's this thing say? Oh, the letter from the author? Dear Page Habit people. What does the underneath the dust jacket look like? Oh, it's red and black. I am so excited to read this. This was one of the books I had on my most anticipated reads list. Uh, I don't know if it was this year or last year. But I'm absolutely looking forward to this. And again, she has it too, so I'm pretty sure we're going to buddy read this at some point in time. But Jamie, I am so excited for the books that you sent me. Thank you so, so much for um, wrapping them. That was super sweet. I love it. I love it. All right. The last trade away box for now. Um, I will be going to my post office uh, tomorrow to see if the other two boxes are in yet. 
um, because I am leaving this uh, week to see my sister, if I don't have them in this video, then I will just talk about them next year when I come back. Um, this box is from Itzel, excuse me, from Itzel Rodriguez. This is going to be absolute surprise. I'm pretty sure. Or maybe not. Maybe we discussed it. Oh my god, it smells delicious in here. <sighs> what is that? I am the worst at smells. It's like fruity and floral at the same time. Kind of like lemon. <gasps> Ooh! I got a letter. A nice long letter. It smells so good. Thank you so much, Itzel. Um, I've never traded with you before, and I know I wrote in the note that I sent in your box that we didn't even discuss, like, your address or anything, but then I did find it on my Instagram that we did say, like, you told me that the box had been sent, but we didn't discuss what you were going to send me, and so this is a true surprise, and I'm, like, still super, super excited. And everything smells so good. Is it... Like, a, is that like a, a soap or maybe that's it. Maybe this is it. Oh, yes. Mango coconut guava. Mmm. Island soap candle works made in Hawaii. It smells so good. It's like a coconut shell. And then there's the candle. It's, it makes the whole box smell absolutely delicious. I freaking love it. All right. Next is the book. Okay. <laughs> I love books so much. I don't even care what it is. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Shanghai Girls by Lisa C. From the author of the New York Times bestseller, Snowflower and the Secret Fan. Look how pretty those girls are. Ooh. Is this a, um, like a, well, it's a fiction, obviously, but what kind of fiction? In 1937, Shanghai is the Paris of Asia, a city of great wealth and glamour, the home of millionaires and beggars, gangsters and gamblers, patriots and revolutionaries, artists and warlords. Thanks to the financial security and material comfort comforts provided by their father's prosperous rickshaw business, 21-year-old Pearl Chin and her younger sister May are having the time of their lives. Ooh, I don't want to read anymore. I'm interested to find out if this is going to be some kind of like, like a drama or is it going to be um, like a love story? I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's not that long. And I love books set in other... One of my favorite books is... Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck. I read that a really, really long time ago. And maybe it's not my favorite anymore, but I know back in high school when I read it, I just, I absolutely loved that story so much. Those are all the trade-aways. I'm going to check again tomorrow, but I do want to have this video uploaded ASAP. So if it's not here tomorrow, then I'm just going to upload this and then I'll make a mini haul later. Hello, my friends. Um, this is a very bad angle, and I will adjust it in a second. Um, but I did want to mention that it's late, that this is terrible lighting. Um, I am in my room. The computer light is coming from here. Um, I don't have, I don't really have light in my bedroom. Hold on. Oh, wow. I just made it worse. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. Well, um, just kidding. So yesterday I filmed the entire um, book haul video. I did mention that I was going to go back and check my post office. And I did have a package there. This one is from Christine. Um, she, I am only waiting for two more people. And I just want to get this up. So, Abriana, I do apologize that your book is not in this video. Um, 
but I love you and I appreciate you trading with me. And I also have um, Samantha. Now, Samantha hasn't even sent out her package yet, so I'm absolutely going to share with you guys what I got from Samantha next year, you know, when I come back from vacation. Um, <laughs> all right, so let me hold, does this, no. So kind of better it's kind of better so inside my package from Christine I got the couple next door by Sherry Lapina I I think I know it's so hard to trade with me because I own practically everything but I think I own this book um, same as Always, if I do own this book, Christine, I will absolutely keep this one and then I will um, give away the one I have on my shelf already. Um, so thank you for this. Thank you so much. Uh, Christine also sent me another book and this one is called The Night Olivia Fell by Christina McDonald. Um, this sounds very familiar. And I am excited to read it. It says, um, it's Big Little Lies meets Reconstructing Amelia in this emotional charged novel about a mother unraveling the truth behind how her daughter became brain dead and pregnant. Um, that doesn't sound familiar, but the title sounds familiar. I'm looking forward to reading that one. Thank you so much, Christine, for sending me those two books. I love it. Um, and then I did go to the library bookstore today. Um, I had a little bit of time before I had to pick up my son, and so I wanted to browse, and I got lucky. Um, so I found Bite Me which is a love story by Christopher Moore. This is the third book and the final in the vampire series. I think the first one is um, Sucking Fiends or something like that. And then the second one is called You Suck and then this one's called Bite Me. And then this is what I'm super, hold on, my arm is sore. God, you, you would think that just holding an iPhone, your arm wouldn't get ridiculously tired. And I haven't even been filming for four minutes. Um, I'm a wimp and I barely picked up the camera. Uh, I do apologize. Okay, <clears throat> this is what I found at the library bookstore. This was sitting on the shelf with all of the movies and I thought, oh, Stephen King. And I'm looking at the spine to like see like, oh, what, what movies is this? And it says, a novel in six parts. And I'm like, wait, what? They, <laughs> yeah. This is the Green Mile, not the movie. Those, whoever put this on the the shelf is crazy. Um, this isn't gonna work. Let me put it back in like its little makeshift spot here. Um, it's right up against a book that I am reading. Um, okay, so in here there is these old, these old, books. This came out in the 80s, I think. I think. Just for the sake of looking. I, I mean, I, I'm so interested. I love Stephen King so much. You know what I mean? So this one. Okay, so this was first printed in 1996. So not the 80s, but they have like goofy covers. So this one is called The Two Dead Girls. Um, oh, here's book. So, so this is book one because there's the number on the top. Then we have book two, which is The Mouse on the Mile. And then we have book three, which is uh, Coffee's Hands. Book four, which is The Bad Death of Edward Della Cruz. I loved this movie, by the way. Uh, I loved and hated it. I mean, that cop... I. He's such a sleaze, and he's such a sleaze in real life. Like, I've never liked that character with his personas in movies or his actual... I mean, he married a 16-year-old. What a weirdo. Uh, number five is The Night Journey, and number six is called Coffee on the Mile. This is the first and only book um, that King decided to publish in a set like this. It's, it's almost like it's written 
in well it's written in parts and he really does like writing in parts if you've ever read a Stephen King book um, you would know that it's like part one and then it's got all the chapters in it part two all the chapters in it so I'm really excited to own this I did see this a couple of years ago at a um, like a swap meet and I didn't buy it then and I was pretty bummed when we left thinking oh I should have gotten that, but I didn't know that the Green Mile pretty much only came in this kind of series, like when it first came out. Now I think it, there's a bind up of it, but I like these small little, um, um, sm small sizes, because I feel like I can chew it better, eat it better, you know, I swallow it better. How does the saying go? I'm so tired. Today has been so long. Um, anyways. I'm going to add this clip to the video. Um, thank you again for watching, and I will talk to you later. Bye. All right, the very last box here is my Christmas presents from Penelope. Um, if I had time, <laughs> I would just make a separate video of just unwrapping Penelope's package, but, um, I don't have time for that. All right. Uh, I love, love, love Penelope that you like literally had it wrapped. That is so, so sweet of you. And I'm absolutely going to steal these little bags. I mean, they're my bags, but I'll put my sister's books in here because recycling is key to victory. Yes? Yes. All right. The first book... <gasps> I love you. I love you. <laughs> the first book that Penelope bought me is Charlie the Choo Choo by Beryl Evans, AKA Stephen King, AKA this is the main book in the Dark Tower series. If Jake didn't have this book with him, uh, they wouldn't be able to go on with their mission. And I am dying. When I first read this book, and I was like, oh my gosh. Like, this totally, like, Stephen King totally blurbed this. He was so smart about how he wrote this book. Oh my god, I love, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I've been wanting that book forever. Because it's not only Stephen King, but, you know, it's Stephen King. And the train is really creepy, and I love the song. Let me sing you the song super, super fast. I mean, you guys don't care, right? This video is already extremely long. Um, but I, I, I read this to my kids in the same exact creepy voice. Don't ask me silly questions. I won't play silly games. I'm just a simple choo-choo train and I'll always be the same. I only want to race along beneath the bright blue sky and be a happy choo-choo train until the day I die. Thanks, Penelope. Much love. <laughs> All right. And the next bag here is... Is Let's find out. Let's find out. Dun, 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 dun. <gasps> Yes. The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. So exciting. Um, it's funny because I was just talking to my friend Celine at work. She uses my books as, uh, she uses me as a library and she borrows all my books. And she just read um, uh, The Death of Mrs. Mrs. Hathaway? West, Westaway. Mrs. Westaway. And she said it's not that good. And I was telling her, oh my gosh, I totally need to buy the next book in line, uh, The Turn of the Key, so that way she can compare. And thanks, Penelope, you've read my mind. I was totally going to buy this this year. Um, I'm so excited. Thank you so, so much. I absolutely love Ruth Ware, and I love the fact that you can see her progression in the way she writes. So in A Dark, Dark Wood, um, it, it was very like gripping and engaging and I couldn't figure it out. And then the next one came out. I was like, oh my gosh, I still don't, oh, the woman in cabin 10. I'm like, what is going on? And then, uh, the, the, 
the lying game came out and I was just like okay this is beyond better than the other two books that I read so when I heard Celine say that the death of Mrs. Westaway isn't as good it kind of bummed me out so I'm hoping that after I read that one and I get onto this one that this one is by far better than all of the rest or if this could be on par with the lying game or better that would be brilliant all right seriously those are all of the books in this book haul unless of course I get the other two books tomorrow at the book at the post office but mm, yeah I'm done I'm done for this month no more books for me thank you so much for watching let me know down below if you have read any of these books if you own any of these books if you want to talk about any of these books uh i want to hear everything i'm sorry i'm always gone i love you guys i thank you so much for watching my channel and i will try to be here more often in 2020 um this year has just been amazingly busy but everything is fine and i'm happy it's fine it's absolutely fine all right thank you so much for watching i will talk to you guys soon i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week and that's it <laughs> bye